Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to Storytime with Miss Felicia. I'm so glad you guys can join me today. Today is July 2nd, and this weekend is July 4th, where we have fireworks all over the place. Can you guys show me your fireworks? Who goes to see the fireworks on 4th of July? I know I watch them from my window sometimes. And sometimes we go out to the park and we go see the fireworks pop off. I don't know how this year's gonna be because I know with coronavirus going on and everything, we don't wanna be in big crowds, but hopefully you can see some wonderful fireworks from your front porch or your backyard or from your window. But this week for story time, we decided it would be really cool to read a story about a really special man. He's a lumberjack. Can anybody guess who it would be? Ah, you could guess. It's Paul Bunyan. Paul Bunyan was a really famous lumberjack. He's not real though. He was just a lumberjack that was a giant made up by people's imagination. And he happened to be born on July 4th. What? That's crazy, right? What a coincidence. But I thought it would be really, really cool to read a story about Paul Bunyan. I loved reading the story about Paul Bunyan when I was a little girl. He just does so many amazing things and he's so strong and he's just, he's all around amazing and cool. So we're gonna read about Paul Bunyan and his best friend and his pet, the blue ox named Babe. So who's ready? Let's read about Paul Bunyan. And look, there's his blue ox, Babe. The Bunyans welcome Paul, born today, July 4th at 625 AM weighing 156 pounds. What, that's craziness. A baby weighing 156 pounds? He weighs more than I do. He probably weighs more than you, 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 all put together. Paul Bunyan, a tale, a tall tale retold and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. Look at Paul. That's him as a baby. He's as tall as a cow. And cows are pretty tall, right? Wow, that's a big baby. Paul Bunyan was the largest, smartest, and strongest baby ever born in the state of Maine. Even before he learned to talk, Paul showed an interest in the family logging business. He took the lumber wagon and wandered through the neighborhood collecting trees. Look at that silly baby. Look, are those the trees he needs to collect? When you do logging, does anybody know what logging is? That's where they cut down trees and collect the wood from the tree, the logs, for building and for firewood and for other important things like building, making houses and um, things that we use to make woodwork, right? But he, he's breaking down some apple trees. That's not what kind of logging they need, but he wasn't, he didn't know, he was just a baby. <gasps> Whoa, he's breaking down a huge tree. There were so many complaints about Paul's visit that his parents anchored his cradle in the harbor. So, look at that huge tree he just ripped out of the ground. That is a strong baby, right? That's amazing. Uh-oh, but look what happened when he ripped it out of the ground. He didn't realize there was a church next door and he crashed into the church. So his parents decided, let's put him in the harbor. They made his house, his crib into a little boat 
so he can't get near any trees or land. That's silly, right? Our parents wouldn't do that. All was well until Paul started rocking the cradle and stirring up waves. After his parents had paid for the damage, they decided to move to the backwoods where life would be more peaceful. Whoa, look at that strong baby. Do you see him? He's up there. He's all the way up there. He's rocking that cradle. Rock, 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 but look what he's doing. He's making these huge waves. And he flooded the whole town. Oh no, the people are on their roofs. Oh, this baby is so silly and destructive. Paul loved his new wilderness home. He soon grew into a sturdy lad who was so quick on his feet, he could blow out a candle and leap into bed before the room became dark. Every day he joined his forest friends in their sports. He raced with the deer and wrestled with the grizzly. Look, this is Paul as a boy. See, he's racing with the deer. He's super fast like deer. And he's strong and he's wrestling with the grizzly bears. He's not even afraid of them. Don't wrestle with grizzly bears. That's dangerous. This is a fake story. Remember that. One morning, Paul awoke and to find the world under a blanket of blue snow. He heard a moan from inside the snowdrift, and there he found a shivering ox calf. Paul adopted him and named him Babe. Both Paul and Babe began growing at an astonishing rate, but the ox never lost the color of the snow from which he'd been rescued. So the ox was blue forever. And the ox grew big, like Paul, as well. As the years passed, the two of them proved to be an extremely helpful, be extremely helpful in the family business. So Paul is super strong, his, his ox is super big. So they're helping with the family. Do you guys help with your families and your family businesses? I bet you guys are really good helpers, right? I don't think, I don't think Babe is helping. He looks like he's helping himself to the cake. Let's see. At 17, Paul grew a fine beard, which he combed with the top of a pine tree. By the time other settlers were beginning to crowd into the main, by this time, other settlers were beginning to crowd into the main wood. Paul felt an urge to move on. He said goodbye to his parents and headed west. Paul wanted to cross the country with the best lumbering crew available. He hired Ole, a celebrated blacksmith, and two famous cooks, Sourdough Slim and Cream Puff Daddy. Then he signed up legendary lumbermen like Big Timber, Hardjaw Murphy, and the Seven Hatchet Brothers. <laughs> Those are silly names. Look, he's combing his beard with the top of a tree because he's that tall. And he's only 17 years old. But look, he sees all the new people coming to move in to Maine. So he said, you know what? I think it's time for us to go. And him and Babe, they recruited some cool friends so that they could have food, and they could have tools. They need a blacksmith to have tools and they need the chef to be the cook so that they can have food. And he needed his team of lumberjack men to cut down trees with him. Paul put the camp buildings on wheels so that Babe could haul them from one forest to another. As soon as he, he had cleared the land, pioneers moved in to set up farms and villages. On the far slopes of the Appalachian Mountain, several of Paul's men were uh, ambushed by a gang of underground orgs called 
gumbaroos. Paul grabbed the camp dinner horn and blew a thunderous note into the gumbaroos cave, determined to blast the meaning, the meanness right out of them. Whoa. So he wanted to blast the meanness out of the, where are they? The gumbaroos, because they were snatching up his men. Did it work? Let's see. To Paul's dismay, the gumbaroos responded by snatching the entire crew. A wild, rough and tumble rumpus began inside the den. Whoa, look at those gumbaroos. They're all green and furry. Oh no, they got all the crew. Let's see. When the historic tussle was over, the gumbaroos needed six weeks to untangle themselves. They disappeared into the depths of the earth and they've never been heard from since. Paul's next job was to clear the heavily forested Midwest. He hired armies of extra woodsmen and built enormous new bunk houses. The men sailed up to bed in balloons and parachuted down to breakfast in the morning. Unfortunately, the cooks couldn't flip flapjacks fast enough to satisfy all the newcomers. So Paul and his crew, they had to make new houses. But look, isn't that cool? Look at that. They use parachutes to come down. They build sky rise houses so that they can sleep all the way up in the top because there were so many people. And they use balloons to get up instead of ladders because the ladders weren't tall enough. To solve the muddle, Paul built a colossal flatjack griddle. The surface was greased by kitchen helpers with slabs of bacon laced to their feet. Isn't that silly? They have bacon strapped to their feet and they're playing hockey on the griddle so that they can grease it to make flapjacks. And look, that big picture back there, that's all the flapjack batter. That'll surely make enough pancakes for everybody. Flapjacks are pancakes, another name for pancakes. Every time the hot griddle was flooded with batter, it blasted a delicious flapjack high above the clouds. Usually the flapjacks landed neatly beside the griddle, but sometimes they were a bit off target. Paul took a few days off to dig the St. Lawrence River and the Great Lake so that barges from a Vermont maple syrup could be brought to camp. Look at all the amazing things that they're doing. Look at those giant flapjacks. Look at them, they're flying through the air. They're landing on the buildings, you see? They landed on the buildings. Fueled by the powerful mixture of the flapjacks and syrup, the men leveled the Great Plains and shaved the slopes of the Rocky Mountains. They probably would have sawed the peaks themselves into logs if a blizzard hadn't suddenly buried the entire mountain range. Look at that, they're working so hard. All the men, they have all their strength from eating all their flesh. That blizzard continued for several years, snuffing out the spring, summers, and autumns. The crew buried into their bunkhouses and hibernated. They became so depressed that Paul asked Ole to make a pair of sunglasses for his friend. When Dave saw the world's colored green, he thought he'd stumbled into a field of clover. He began eating the snow with such gusto 
that soon the treetops reappeared. So they made Babe. Babe was so sad because it was just all snow all the time. So they made Babe a pair of sunglasses that looked, made the world look green. So Babe thought he was eating grass and he ate all the snow up. At that point, all those pent up spring times simply exploded, dissolving the snow, the storm clouds and the remaining snow. Paul and his friends invited some newly arrived settlers to join them in a celebration of all the holidays that had been missed. Can you guys spot out any holidays in this picture? I see one. Look, I see jack-o'-lanterns for Halloween. And what is Paul wearing? He's wearing a Santa hat. They're celebrating all the holidays together. And they have a turkey over here. Right? They're having a big festival, a big festivity, a big party. After the festival, the lumberjacks continued their journey, but as they headed southwest, the blistering sun and giant Texas varmints proved to be more of a problem than they had expected. Travel became so difficult that some of the men began to speak longingly to be buried by the blizzard and bear hugging and bear hugs by the gumbaroo. Oh, it's really hard for them to walk through the desert. Big old snake. Can any of you guys make a snake sound? While crossing Arizona, the griddle curled up like a burnt leaf and the batter evaporated. Deprived of their flapjacks, the lumbermen became weak and discouraged. Paul's great axe fell from his shoulders, gouging the jagged trench, which today is known as the Grand Canyon. Do you guys think that's how the Grand Canyon is made? Maybe. Look, all his men are so tired because it's so hot in Arizona. Disaster seemed certain until Paul came, upon, came up with a desperate plan. He headed east and found a family that could sell him a barn filled with corn. Babe galloped it, galloped it back across the desert. When the flaming sunrise hit the barn, it exploded, and the lumbermen awoke to find themselves in a raging blizzard of Popcorn! Oh, that's so clever, Paul. Dizzy with joy, they pulled on their mittens and began blasting each other with popcorn balls. Look at that. They're having a popcorn ball fight, not a snowball fight in the summer. A westerly wind kept the cooling clouds of popcorn swirling around Paul and his crew until they crossed California and reached the Pacific Ocean. See how strong Paul is? He's lifting up a whole whale. After he had crossed the country, some say that Paul gave up lumbering and rambled north, searching for new areas of untouched wilderness. 
with the passing years, Paul has been seen less and less frequently. However, along with his unusually his unusual size and strength, he seems to possess an extraordinary longevity. Sometimes his great burst of laughter can be heard rumbling like distant thunder across the wild Alaskan mountain ranges where he and Babe still roam. Maybe one day you could travel to Alaska and try to see if you could find Paul Bunyan. Well, that's our story for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I love the story of Paul Bunyan. Though it might not be real, it's so amazing to see all the cool things that he did. And those flapjacks, whoo! If I could get one of those flapjacks, they just look so yummy, don't you think? Uh, until next time, I'm glad that you guys can join us. Have a happy Fourth of July and a great weekend.